Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Avorian episode 68. I'm Enigmius and today the chariot carrier build continues with detailing. It's nice to be in this spot. Uh, th there's always uh, a certain amount of relief when we get to this point where the, the build is structurally complete. All of the main elements are in place, they're done, and now we get to go around the ship and spend a little bit of time adding a little bit of detail to it doesn't serve a practical purpose, but it kind of improves the appearance of it or alters the appearance of it. Might be a more fair way to describe it because we're talking about something subjective. The whole idea for me, whenever I go into this sort of portion of the process is trying to find a balance between things that are significant enough to be worthwhile doing without being gaudy, without being really ostentatious and, and kind of drawing attention to themselves at the expense of all of the time and effort that went into the, the design of the main ship itself. So there's, there's I mean, it, it depends on who you talk to. It depends on who looks at the ship and kind of makes the final determination for themselves whether I was successful or whether I missed the mark. And in this case, I'm focusing on the side areas of the ship just for this first detailing pass because it seemed like the part of the ship that needed the most attention not because i was unhappy with what i had produced but because there was just a, a lot of flat space and it seemed like there we there was the opportunity to do more and you can see we added a little piece there very quickly and easily it's got some rounded elements to it uh, if you were to try and sit and figure out what functional purpose it might have on a ship, you could arrive at a variety of different theories, but it doesn't insist that it's something. It's just there. It's just a thing that's sticking to the side of the ship. And then we got to this point here, which I really wanted to, to kind of mess around with this, this whole idea of just using very simple shapes stacked together uh, and also borrowing from this whole concept of a nest of antennas, like you see in a lot of uh, sci-fi space kind of uh, structures. It's just a, a whole bunch of antennas or things that resemble antennas uh, jammed together in a way that, again, they're very, very subtle. If you look at them from a distance, you almost can't see them, but they, they definitely add something of interest when you're close enough that you can see them and in this case I went for the smallest profile that you could get with the cube stretched out and that was what I used but then for the ends I was using um, regular slope blocks just stretched out so that they don't look quite so sloped uh, as well as some of the outside corner the five faced outside corner blocks just to kind of give things a little bit of visual interest here I'm building uh, some little cylinders that mostly resemble little cylinders. They're eight-sided, they're octagons, but from the right angle and the right distance, they look like little cylinders sticking out. And then we add some details above and below. And this is kind of the way I do it. Is It's uh, fairly random. Um, certainly, there's a, an arbitrary nature to it. Again, the, the, the point is not to suggest that these have any sort of functional purpose on the ship, but they're there. So they, they kind of um, give a little bit of depth, a little bit of texture in a more interesting way than simply, um, you know, leaving things flat or just kind of the, the, the corners and the curves and the, the transitions that we've already got. This part here, uh, I have this thing about stacking thin pieces with gaps in between. Uh, and in this case, I decided to do it in a way that if you look at it from the front of the back, it looks like it's got a bit of a curve to it. Realistically speaking, again, it's definitely one of those things where, uh, you know, subject subjectively speaking, you could take it or leave it. It's definitely uh, not necessarily my best work, but it serves the purpose. It adds that little bit of texture. It adds a little bit of visual interest to an area that was otherwise um, pretty barren. And then once we got uh, this part done, I, I kind of get caught in these ideas that you know the antennas should all be facing forward and then i realized no they, they don't have to be facing forward we could have some that are facing backward and just kind of fill out this area a little bit more and it's the same general principle as what we did on the front side very narrow um pieces that are extended 
And then in this case, I decided to connect them with little pieces that kind of go from one antenna to the next to the next. Again, it's all just adding a little bit of something that if you were to look close enough, you would notice like, hey, that's that's more detail than I would have expected on a ship like this. It's actually there's there's some stuff going on here that's kind of interesting to look at for a couple of seconds and then move on. That's kind of the the whole goal uh, with everything that we'll be doing in terms of the detailing. Another thing that I wanted to consider with this build in particular was um, there, there's always that part where you get towards the end of a build, or for me anyways, where I get towards the end of a build, and I'm just kind of eager to be done with it. So the detailing quite often gets uh, left behind and doesn't really end up being as good as it could be because I'm just, yeah, that's better than it was. It's not flat anymore. We got some stuff. We're done. Let's Let's do a blueprint and move on to the next ship. But in this case, I'm really happy with the way that this ship turned out with the, the basic structure and the basic elements of it. And I wanted to kind of take a little bit of extra time and expand on that and kind of really sort of push the limits. We're still below 10,000 blocks for this ship, which is, I think, fairly reasonable, all things considered. It's... Uh, roughly the same size as the station that we built. It just doesn't have all of those ridiculous circles everywhere that caused the block count to skyrocket. So in terms of the performance impact, we've still got plenty of room to play around with this, add those details and not have to worry that we're pushing it beyond a reasonable limit in terms of what we can expect the, the game to do in order to be able to handle it without stuttering and slowing down and causing all kinds of other problems. So we've got this middle section where I put some engines and again thinking in terms of what we can do to get rid of some of this flat space I decided that we would just have sort of like a um, pseudo elliptical cross section just kind of sticking out the side here different color than the piece that we're mounting it to so that it stands out just a little bit more otherwise I think it might be a little bit too subtle and that by itself uh, I probably could have left it right there and uh, been pretty happy with it, but I decided just to add a little bit more. And then this is, again, something that I haven't really done a whole lot in the past, which is just taking very, very basic geometry and attaching it in ways that kind of look like they could make sense structurally. Um, but uh, again, they, they don't speak to a particular purpose, so we can do really whatever we want. And we're just stacking shapes. We're stacking shapes on shapes until we're happy that we've stacked enough that it's you know it's it's got enough substance to it that it warrants having it on the ship but we aren't creating anything there, there's certainly no masterpiece going on here with this particular process we're basically just putting things in, on um, that your eye will glance at and maybe spend a little bit of time looking at the finer details but ultimately it's the same thing um, that we were doing in the front section various miscellaneous bits and bobs that we could take or leave it's kind of uh, that sort of thing this back section is where i had kind of a hard time deciding specifically what it was that i wanted to do here um we've got the hangar which by itself adds a certain amount of visual interest but then we've got all of that space directly below the hangar that's just very flat and i didn't want to take away from the the appearance of the hangar but at the same time I didn't really want to um, have anything too understated to the point where you kind of look at it and say, yeah, that's not very interested at all. And so I decided what I would like to do is take uh, some of these sloped pieces, very narrow, uh, relatively tall um, compared to the other dimensions, and stack together so that they're uniform. You can see I've got some blocks in place that are basically acting as spacers um just to help with the placement and i originally intended on intended on removing all of these spacers um but there is so many and i started selecting them all for the purpose of deleting them and i said yeah we don't we don't have to do that we're just gonna leave it and we're gonna see what it looks like when we're done so we have this long strip of blocks directly beneath the hangar um so far not really I mean, if you look close enough, it, it's a little bit busy. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of individual pieces, but it doesn't really draw that much attention to itself because you recognize fairly early on that it's a lot of repetition. There's not a lot of, you know, there's nothing unique from one little segment to the next. It's basically all the same thing. You can see here how far I get before I realize 
selecting all these blocks to delete them was kind of silly. And then the the plan from the beginning was to have another sloped block running the full length of this structure that we're sort of creating this substructure, but not extending out as far. So we get a little bit of um, depth from the pieces that we've already placed because they stick out a little bit farther. But then we get some, you know, structural significance out of this piece that we're trying to place underneath in a way that overlaps. I haven't tried the um, hologram, holograph skill trick uh, for a little while, but in this case, I didn't really think I needed. The goal was to make this sloped piece that we want to add uh, small enough so that we can sort of place it almost in behind these pieces and it's not going to overlap so much that the game is going to tell us that we can't place it. And it just took a little while to figure out what I could get away with in terms of the dimensions in order for this whole thing to work. I was kind of surprised because uh, it, it wound up being a lot thinner. This piece that we're just about to place wound up being a lot thinner uh, than I expected. In the end, it works, especially when I painted it so that it stood out a little bit differently from the, the backdrop that we're attaching it to wasn't necessarily exactly what I had in mind, but it was another one of those things where uh, I placed it and I thought, yeah, that's that's not too bad. I'll, I'll stick with that for now. And a couple days from now, maybe if I'm not happy with it, maybe we'll change it to something else. But the whole idea here, you can see, is finally coming into place. Getting this piece to, to tack in behind all those individual pieces that we placed, uh, it took a little while, but we got it done. And that's sort of the key having spent all that time uh, I got to this point here which would probably wound up being one of the more significant uh, things that I did in terms of detailing adding something that was visually interesting to just kind of get rid of some of that flatness and I decided you could see here we've got more of those stacked pieces with the gaps in between we've got some um, very simple geometry uh, on either side of those and then we start using some slopes and just kind of build it out a little bit to try and make sure that things are, are lining up uh, as best we can. We don't necessarily want to start sacrificing that idea of, you know, keeping things lining up where they should just because it's detail, detailing and we don't have to necessarily line everything up. I prefer to keep things still looking structured, still looking like they were done on purpose and... Uh, this was just the beginning of this little section that I was working on and I'm just kind of messing around with spacing of these sort of slats trying to figure out how to make it work and then placing some slope pieces on the top and bottom of this column just for the sake of making it look a little bit different breaking it up a little bit we don't necessarily want uh, this same sort of pattern repeating too much and placing uh, some slope pieces some corner pieces uh, seemed like a good way to do that, to kind of break things up a little bit and keep things a little bit fresh when you're kind of looking over the whole thing. It doesn't take long. It's a great opportunity to experiment with different blocks, different placements, see how things go together, come up with some maybe some ideas that you never thought of before. Uh, that's exactly what I was thinking, specifically as I was doing this part here, was that, you know, this is an exercise or an opportunity to turn this into an exercise of just kind of messing around and doing different things. And one of the parts of that was using these trust blocks. I've known that they're in the game since the first time I opened the build menu, they kind of stand out as being one of the only blocks that has transparent elements to them. But they do such a nice job of adding visual interest without creating that sense that they're they're there for a reason and they have to be uh, structurally significant. They're, they're just there. Um, and you say, why are they there? Because that's where I put them. That's, that's all there is to it. And I really wanted to put some to either side of the hangar, but I forgot that the hangar says, no, no, not even if you're placing in the area where it's solid, can you place it in front of the hangar? So that didn't work out. But this part here did. And I can see more trusses showing up on this build before all of the detailing is done. So uh, this is kind of a taste of what I've been working on. I spent a certain amount of time repainting the ship and experimenting with different colors. You can see that we've got uh, sort of like a turquoise and then uh, an aquamarine. Just similar colors, but enough of a difference that when you look at the various different parts of the ship, they kind of stand out because 
they're slightly different and then we're going to be using different colors on the details as well just to kind of help them stand out a little bit on their own so the next episode we're going to finish the detailing and we'll have the blueprint ready that's basically that's all that's left is to do the detailing do some testing with fighters producing fighters making sure that everything works in that category we'll put some uh, turrets on the ship and kind of mess around with that get things so that when I talk about what the ship is capable of I'm doing so from the point of view of having spent a little bit of time using this ship as opposed to just talking about the theory so that's that'll be the next episode if you want to be notified about that and future episodes in this and other series the easiest way to do that is to subscribe to my channel or follow me on social media links for social media are always in the information section below the video Feel free to leave your comments and feedback. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.